Game of Thrones ended, uh, or the, the the longest battle scene ended that we've kind of seen in Game of Thrones history. I think it may be in TV history too. Um, and it finally put a a full stop in the in the saga of the Night King, the Night Walker, the White Walkers, and the Waits. Um, and again, just an incredible show. I somehow avoided all the spoilers. I don't know how I did it because I ended up watching it the Monday evening, so yesterday night. I mean, I think it came on TV Monday morning, like 3 a.m. if you were to watch it. It came on TV on Sunday in America for the most part, as it usually does. But it seemed like it was one of those episodes for them. It seems like it was one of the first episodes, maybe apart from Red Wedding and a few others, where people actually live streamed it. So I think you can watch it live streamed, I think, on 3 a.m. in the morning if you live in the UK. 3 a.m. Sunday, Monday morning, basically. Um, which meant everyone on social media was kind of you know, talking about it and spreading it and spreading what basically happened. But somehow I managed to avoid it. I saw loads of thumbnails of Aya and the Night King, but I didn't know what happened. I didn't know whether or not the Night King um, abducted Aya in the hope of getting Bran. I don't know whether or not... I, I don't know what happened. Jeremy, I had no context. I just saw the, the thumbnail. I didn't, I didn't have any context of what would happen. And the show itself, it started off incredibly well, a very slow pace. I love the music, the cinematography. Um, I'm not I'm not mad at the darkness of it, right? A lot of people are complaining about it. I think if you watched the Game of Thrones from yesterday years, you'd know that they filmed like that on purpose to kind of uh, give it that extra effect, the added effect that, you know, it is actually medieval, or quote-unquote medieval times. Um, the lack of light was something that was, you know, um, fundamental to that kind of era. Um, where they are, the fact, you know, when you include magic, mysticism inside of it and... It's a it's a really clever way of in it's a really clever way of increasing the frightness the fright levels the thriller levels of the actual program without it just being gory and being you know ridiculously you know getting you jumping out of seat every two minutes just by lowering the fucking contrast and making it a little bit darker but then having all these incredible sounds people getting fucked up chopped cut um, necks being flying off here and head flying off here and there everywhere. Um, that was a great part of it. I loved the the, the the scene with the dragons fighting in the air, uh, the Nightwalker dragon and, and Daenerys and um, John fighting in the air too. That was awesome. Um, them falling off of it, the battle with the dragons, one dropping, one falling on the floor, the Night King's dragons destroying Winterfell for the most part, smashing into fucking smithereens, um, the Unsullied, uh, the Dothraki going out first, that scene, oh, with Missandro lighting up all those swords. That was incredible, right? So she, I guess when she went away, she went away basically to maybe increase her powers and get more stronger because she came back and was able to kind of light up everyone's sword. That was fucking incredible to see. And then and then having that, because it looked like they were quite scared. I remember seeing a couple of videos where they said that the, um, the Dothraki are quite superstitious, right? They're afraid of magic in that sense. So um, seeing someone like a Melisandre would, would have gave them hope uh, of kind of facing the Nightwalkers. But, you know, that scene was incredible. She lit up all their flames all their swords, sorry, they kind of charged into the White Walkers or the Waits and then bit by bit, the fucking lights went out like candles. It's kind of similar to the scene where um, Cersei blows up the Sept uh, with the candle, right? As the guy's kind of like trying to crawl across, trying to blow up the candle and the candle kind of dims and then everything blows up. It's sort of sim similar sort of like connection with that one, right? The the the, the Fracky go in, flying head first into a brick full of Whites and then all of a sudden their flyers will their fires will die out and then you know the whites come out charging out running at breakneck speed incredible to see that um in general just an amazing amazing battle um some bits i've picked out from the forums and stuff that i thought i wanted to share with you guys um of course you guys have seen the burlington bar reaction which is fucking awesome i think it's a bar in chicago that's that live streams a show I'm not sure how they get away with it because I know sometimes um, the UFC and other people like that are a little bit finicky with people live streaming shows. I'm not sure if that is if this if it's not looked down upon as much as maybe sporting events. Maybe that might be a thing. I have no idea, but this is really incredible video that kind of shows uh, people getting absolutely hyped on the whole <laughs> Game of Thrones ending here at the Burlington show. Let me see if I can get it up here and click on here to show it. Yep, it's showing now. Hopefully you can hear it. The piano was amazing, though, no? This is the, I think this is the final scene. The piano is amazing. Oh, so good. He took so long to walk across, though, didn't he? And I think it's the second time only to use the piano. I think the, the first time was, uh, again, when uh, Cersei brought up the sept of, um, that, you know, the sept with all the fucking finger people in it. Wow. Look at this. Wow. Hand up. 
And then that one turns around, discovers, and here it is. Aya Stark saving the fucking day. Grabbed in the neck. So good. Drops it. Boom! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, man! So cool, so fucking cool. Honestly, I was screaming. I was screaming in my room watching this. It was so amazing to see, man. So fucking cool. And of course, everything shatters. Wow, but yeah, an amazing scene, probably one of my favourites of this entire um, season. And um, I don't know. I think for some people were a bit underwhelmed by it because I think you know. Um, the Night King was a continuing threat from the very first season where to the beginning, right? They spoke about the Night King previously, Winter's Coming, the Night, um, uh, Ned Stark was convinced that they didn't exist. Um, and it was just a, con there were just a, con this threat that lingered in the background. I think a lot of people were pissed off that, you know, this, this kind of over, overbearing threat that was going to take out everybody was suddenly killed off in the first instance. Well, no, ki killed off straight away so easily, right? We kind of assumed, I don't know, I kind of assumed, um, wrongly that, Dragon Glass wouldn't kill the night the Night King. I don't know why I assumed that, but I just had a feeling that you know it wouldn't end this way. It'll go a bit more further than this. But I guess you know um, when you read deeper into it, you realize that the showrunners had decided that Arya Stark was going to be the one to kill the Night King. I think the reason why they had that was because um, she was the unexpected one, right? She started off being really scared and a bit of a you know a little bit alone in that regard and i think what was the reason why they said that? i've never read it i've read it what the reason but forgot anyway but they decided three seasons ago that she was going to she was going to be the one to kill and then you know there's loads of foreshadowing bits of her with um miss sandra talking about she's going to close brown eyes which is the guy who arranged the red wedding thing um it was going to be green eyes which is cersei and blue eyes which is going to be the night king so it's supposedly that's the story but if you read the books no spoiler again spoiler alert because i said at the beginning so already tuned out but if you read the books you would have known that i think in the books jamie lannis is the one that kills cersei's right she's the one that strangles he strangles cersei with a chain or some shit along the lines of that so that's the reason why it happens that way but yeah great show awesome awesome see those kind of reactions i think i might go to a season finale of, of game of thrones 2 to watch it and that might be a similar sort of vein uh, going in the bum watch which might be weird really because i don't think i don't know how it'd be watching a show like that in front of you know surrounded by those different people whether it's quiet where people are chatting shit It'll be interesting to see how that goes. Um, da, 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 da. The Night King smirking. That was an excellent fucking scene, right? You remember that? That was fucking cool, no? Seeing this fucking horrifying face staring back at you. Look at that. Mama Mia, right? That was... um. We should. I, I'm surprised that um, she didn't know, though. Does Darius... Was Darius one not there when the Night King... I don't, know, I don't think she was, was she? No. Um, when John and, and Cole got attacked and the Night King kind of stepped through the fire as they were kind of approaching, right? He kind of walked through it. He doesn't get affected by fire. That was amazing to see, right? He kind of blasted it with dragon fire, which is which is funny because I think someone mentioned that it's a big deal because they use that dragon fire to make the, the fucking knives, right? So the fact that it couldn't affect the Night King was like, whoa, what the fuck? What kind of magical powers does this guy actually have? That was fucking cool to see. Um... And again, a little bit of personality. I thought we were going to hear him speak, really, when he walked up to Brown. I thought we were going to hear, like, blah, 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 some kind of ice kind of language. We didn't hear nothing. He doesn't really speak. There's no language there. But I thought we were going to hear it. That didn't transpire. What else we saw I thought was cool there. Da, 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 da. Blah, 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 blah. What else was cool? Of the list of things that happened on the show. Oh, there's something here that somebody knew a year ago, which was quite an interesting little piece here, right? So a year ago, someone had written this, I think on the forum too, talking about um, one year ago on Reddit, talking about how Aya will kill the Night King. It says the following, um, Aya will kill the Night King. The Valerian still dagger re re reappearing in the Stark storyline uh, is quite uh, conspicuously more than necessary for the Sansa Aya plotline. The useful Chekhov gun of Nymeria's wolf pack capable of running across snowy land without attracting attention from the whites. The general tendency of the show to frustrate expectation in interesting ways. No, uh, no, t nothing will be as you are led to believe, which is true, isn't it? I didn't, I honestly didn't think I will be the one to kill, especially the way they built the series up. The episode was fucking brilliant because it started off with Aya being fearless and not being scared of anything. Then she sees the night, um, the night walk, the White Walkers outside the gates. And kind of fear strikes her heart. Then she starts to fight them. And she starts to realize just how much of a daunting task it is. Then she starts to win. And starts to get more confident. Then they start to overpower her. And she starts to get 
this com- um, less confident again thinks she's gonna die then she's running through the entire castle trying to find a hiding place she can't escape and it just keeps going on and on and on she gets to a place where she finally is able to kind of get some solace and they're stuck in a room together with the the hound and that guy that with the fire sword and she says miss Sandra again and miss Sandra, it basically becomes a faith she becomes a lord of light basically to these people she gives them faith again and makes them believe that okay cool these prophecies that she's saying have some even though the prophecies don't always work out in the same way that you know the girl with the scar on her face they kind of end up sacrificing and letting work out the way you promised the 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 vision that she gets gives them some kind of faith to hold on to and i think that's all that she needed and then you know when says oh what do we see what do we say when we stare death in the face like not today and she runs off and of course when she's running off i guess the whole plan of that is to wait for the night king to approach bran and then jump out from out of nowhere and try and stab him in the neck that was insane um what else is it? The general theme, the Beric uh, Dorian, the number five Beric Dorian system for no plot purpose in that scene for reasons that Aya would not face, she would not could, could sneak past. But yeah, in general, somebody knew a year ago that that was going to happen. And it's true. I think number four is the main thing, right? The general theme of the show to, you know, to all, no, sorry, number three, the general potential of the show to frustrate your expectations, which is true because I think that's what happened in general with the Night King, right? We thought the Night King was a big nemesis that everyone had to face. But now what we realize in the show is that the actual big villain, the bad guy that everyone needs to fucking be worried about is, is Cersei. She killed her own people, right? Um, which led it in, which which inevitably led to the her only child her only surviving child committing suicide in Tommen. Um and she's just completely heartless, right? She doesn't have any regard for anyone apart from herself. She used to care about her children and she used to, there's only people that she's loved outside of maybe herself, her children and Jamie. Um her dad maybe for the most part, but he's dead. She hates her brother. She's plotting to assassinate her brother every single season. Um, she wants to kill every every enemy that comes around her. She wants to squash them like a fly. Just can, she's just ruthless. So I think what people know now is that she's the real threat to the Seven Kingdoms. So they need to get rid of her. But obviously she's got the fleet with Euron Greyjoy, um, naval ships and stuff, which have been an incredible advantage in these last season so far that we've seen in terms of war. She's got the Golden Company that she's paid a lot of money to. It's going to be a very interesting battle to see how that goes down in the next couple of seasons. But supposedly, um, from the few things I've read online, um, next couple of shows are going to be some of the best we're going to go back to the because i think a lot of people are complaining that um the, the i think the seventh and sixth season were a little bit too commercial they kind of um catered more to the general public they're a little bit more soppy and rom-com based whereas the earlier seasons were better because of more political nature of it there was loads of subplots going on at the same time and i've heard that the last three episodes are going to be very very they're going to go back to the uh, game of thrones that we know and love loads of politics involved um it's going to feel like a begin the beginning a middle and the end so four five six they're just going to end really well and again i'm happy that it's just it's just, it's just going to end of the season it feels like the natural conclusion for it to end and i'm also happy that the next the off the kind of um the shows that are going to come after this are going to be uh, prequels that are going to focus on particular characters, their kind of history coming up. That's going to be awesome. Um, what else do I have here on the list about Game of Thrones? And the last thing, um, the House of Mormont. You cannot ever, ever say that she didn't do the damn thing, man. I forgot her what her name was, but this character, um, she fucking smashed it. Juron Mormont too um, went out on his fucking sword and this young lady too went uh, on her fucking sword too. She was getting crushed by that giant literally breaking every single bone in her body and she still managed to fucking stab it in her eye with some um virulian st- virulian store or steel or whatever it's called fucking awesome scene again one of the best shows i think i've watched in a while um i don't know if it's the best show because you know nowadays everyone's watching stuff on the internet we get to kind of sit down and watch it together but i think there is something there's something nice about the idea that it only comes out once a week and we will have to wait to watch it at the same sort of similar time even though some people watch it on a day and be watching the day after the you know the weekend we all have to sit down and wait for this particular show to come on. I think it's worked out really well. Even in the era of streaming where things get uploaded, you know, in the entire season gets uploaded online where you've got to binge watch it. I think off, no, again, I'm not comparing the two shows, but I think with Game of Thrones and Star Trek Discovery, which I've been watching a lot on, on, on fucking game, on Netflix, which is one of my favorite sci-fi shows. I really like the idea that I have to check in every week to kind of watch a new episode. It's not obviously, it's obviously not the same level as Game of Thrones, but I think this might obviously kind of steer some show, some developers, some producers, some writers to kind of go in this direction. Not everything needs to be being watchy. Some things can grow and develop over time in this very convoluted way. Again, just an amazing show from costume design to set design to character art development. Like fucking awesome. Like Theon Greyjoy, man. What an incredible character arc, right? Like he went from, and again, I think someone mentioned the other day, right? I think they showed him running into the White Walkers and eventually dying was like, you know, you don't need to be, um, you don't need to, it's a proof that you don't need to have balls to be a man, right? 
he, he got castrated. Everything that he associates with being a man got taken away from him. I think if you remember the early episodes, he was known for being having a really big dick. Um, that was part of his identity, you know, fucking loads of girls, being a man that way, and that got stripped away from him. He got kind of reduced to nothing. He had to build himself back up again. Redemption, saving his sister, going back and saving the um, the Starks who actually acted like a family to him. It was an amazing character to kind of finish it, and that actor fucking smashed it too. Again, one of my best shows, one of my favorite shows. I can't wait until the next episode. Next Sunday.